For this particular segment, I would say that this it gets a little personal. I personally love the wines of Piedmont, or as the folks in Piedmont say, Piemonte. Piemonte, basically translated, the foot of the mountain. And that's exactly where these guys are located, in the northwestern part of Italy. The capital city is Turin, Torino, and most of the action wine-wise tends to happen a bit south and east of Torino, a little further away from the hills. Not to say that there aren't wines produced right on the foothills of Piemonte, because there are, and they're quite good. But we're going to focus for this particular tutorial uh, on the wines uh, from the Longhe and the Asti uh, regions of, uh, of Piedmont. So let's get down to basics, all right? Uh, what do you guys need to know, all right? For the sake of wine, you need to know, well, first of all, what grapes are involved in Piedmonte, all right? You know, there's not a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon here. The climate isn't conducive to producing uh, world-class Cabernet Sauvignon like there is in Bordeaux or in the Napa Valley. Uh, instead, maybe because of their proximity to France, because they are kind of knocking on the door, um, they tend to focus more on elegant, more, uh, more you know, uh, prettier, yet earthy and stoic grape varieties. The main grape variety in Piedmont is one uh, by the name of Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo, okay? And this refers to the fog, Nebbiolo, ne la nebbia, is the fog that kind of rolls in and, and, and covers the hills of the Longue Valley, and uh, it's kind of what Piedmont's known for. Now this Nebbiolo grape uh, produces several different wines, all of kind of a same style, but because of their locations within Piedmont, have slightly different variations in theme. So first of all, Nebbiolo produces the Barolo wines. You may have heard of Barolo, B-A-R-O-L-O. -O. These Barolo wines are 100% Nebbiolo and can only be grown in the Barolo zone. They go through an aging period of, I believe, at least four years uh, between barrel and bottle before release. And they tend to mirror uh, kind of like a full-bodied, earthier style of, say, a Pinot Noir or a wine from the Burgundy region of France. Uh, they age remarkably well, uh, 10, 12, 15 years, midterm, and they're beautiful, they're elegant, refined, with roses and tar and leather notes and, and sweet cherry fruit. Now, Barolo's got a kind of a kissing cousin. Growing right next door to Barolo is the commune of Barbaresco. Now, Barbaresco is just like Barolo in a lot of ways. It's hilly, it's the same grape variety, 100% Nebbiolo, However, there is a difference. The soils are slightly different. The elevations are a little quirkier. So what you get is a more elegant version of Nebbiolo, right? Maybe the queen to Barolo's king. Still capable of aging, like the Dickens as well. Ten, once again, 10, 12, 15 years. And actually, it's quite similar to Barolo, i.e., a full-bodied Barbaresco will compare quite favorably to, to a lighter-style Barolo. They almost kind of meet dead center, huh? Um, once again, these wines are what we call Burgundian in style. Uh, fragrant, effusive, beautiful, chewy, little chew and young, not deeply colored. Nebbiolo is not a dark grape, it's, it's a lighter style grape. So it's about aromas and perfume and these wonderful balsamic cherry aromas and flavors. Sensational wines. Now, that being said, the wines from Barolo and Barbaresco are quite expensive. Um, the cheapest ones, the least, least expensive ones, run in maybe that $25, $30 price range. So if you're going to get a piece of Piedmont without spending big money, then what we encourage you to do is go next down to the Barbera wines. Now, Barbera, it's funny because in Piedmont, you know, they label the Barolo and Barbaresco wines, even though they're produced from the Nebbiolo grape after the zones that they come from. And, you know, in, in, uh, with the Barbera grape, they kind of do the same thing, but in a little more America-friendly way. So with Barbera, you'll see labels like Barbera da Asti, Barbera da Alba. And what these are is telling you that these are Barbera wines from this particular subzone within Piedmont. Easy, huh? No problem. You know it's Barbera. Simple. Barbera, stylistically, uh, falls into what we call, um, how do I put this? Well, let me, let me say this. I love drinking Barbera. I probably drink more Barbera at home than any other grape variety because of its versatility. It's insanely fruity, um, wonderful dark cherry, black cherry type fruit component in the wine. Um, racy, the wines uh, have a, a beautiful acidity. The Barbera has a grape has wonderful acidity. And, and then in the meantime, they can also develop a sense of complexity. And there's a richness without a heaviness to them. So if you want color and punch and fruit, but you don't want to feel like, oh, then Barbera would be the grape variety for you. And, and nobody does it, nobody in the world does it better than Piedmont. Okay, so Barbera, remember that, because those are beautiful wines. 
Now, moving on, the other major red grape variety in Piedmont is known as Dolcetto. Dolcetto, the little sweet one. But you know, the thing is, nowadays it's not so little, and it's not, def not necessarily that sweet. Um, th the thing about Dolcetto is it's, it's um, meh, right? I don't know how else to describe it. Dolcetto has this wonderful blackberry, you know, snappy blackberry character, this crisp fruit component. Uh, in some areas, like the subzone of Doliani within Piedmont, uh, the wines take on this really dark, inky appearance. You know, they almost look like Petit Syrah, but they taste much racier. And they have this wonderful um, kind of like uh, uh, almondy, almost like a nutty uh, backbone to them. The wines are lightly tannic and tend to be a bit grippier than Barbera. Barbera, the Dolcetto grapes are less tannic, uh, although uh, sometimes they appear to be more full-bodied, right? Awesome. Dolcetto is great. And the thing with Dolcetto is it's usually not very expensive. Most of the Dolcetto wines, which to the Piemontese traditionally were the everyday bistro wines. Every, well, there's no bistros in Italy. Uh, tr trattoria, right? The Trattoria style wine, how's that? Um, Dolcetto fit that bill perfectly. These are incredibly versatile wines, remarkably food friendly. In Piedmont, I, I don't know of any other area in Piemonte that is more skilled at combining wine and food together. That synergy is, is uh, I, I've been to a lot of places, and I, I haven't seen that synergy perfected so well, uh, more so than I have in, the, in, in Piedmont. These guys are just masters at combining food and wine, having a fabulous plate of, say, the classic stuffed annulotti pasta, or a fabulous uh, uh, veal shank, um, the bolito misto, you know, the mixed beef and meat stews that they have there, really stick to your ribs type food, and these wines pair favorably with those types of cuisines. But, in a refined, elegant, and sophisticated way. Um, what else we got for you? Oh, hey! You ever heard of the Shroud of Turin? Well, Turin is Torino. So next time you're in Piedmont, you'll be able to go and see it. Wait, no you won't. That's only out every 10 years. Piedmont, there you go. Later. <laughs>